Hi. Uh, first of all, thank you very much uh, for being here uh, and for all the great talks so far. Um, also, audio, video and all that looks awesome. I have these uh, mics now look like uh, a guy on TV uh, from a Hollywood movie, which is pretty cool. Thank you. So, um, my name is uh, Peter Manev, as I mentioned. I'm with Eric actually over 13, almost 14 years with uh, Suricata. I'm part of the exec team. Super thankful to be part of that uh, open source community. Um, we wrote a book with Eric on, uh, on Suricata. I've been evangelizing a bit on it. And um, also one of the open source uh, silks maintainers. Um, and we've been doing a bunch of trainings and workshops with different military government organizations um, and similar on participating in lots of live fire cyber, cyber exercises drills because I really love learning more. Uh, you can never have enough of, of that in the industry. So, transfer it to you, Monsieur. Hello, I'm Eric Leblanc. Uh, sorry for the accent. I'll probably there is a few French in the room. Um, so I'm a developer on Suricata since almost 13 years now. I'm a board member of OISF, also co-author with Peter and CTO at Stamus Networks. And in my past life, I was uh, working on the Linux firewalling, and I've been part of the NetFilter core team. And one of my side hobby is to find CV on my own project, or at least the project I'm coding on. Um, sometimes it's a bit annoying, but uh, sometimes it's good to find stuff that people have missed. Um, we are both working on, we are both co-founders of uh, Stamus Networks. <coughs> that is a company that is doing a product named Stamus Security Platform. Uh, we also have a lot of open source contribution and we really like to share with the community. Um, most of what we are going to show you is based on this experience at Stamus Networks where we are helping customers and working for customers. Yeah, so over um, 25 um, projects on GitHub, uh, donations, and we're really happy with that. Well, uh, first of all, as I mentioned, of course, we work around network security monitoring and Suricata. Um, and Suricata is, uh, yeah, has evolved over the years, um, is widely used at this point. Uh, by all sorts of um, organizations, um, top providers and similar. Um, and it has one of the cool things about this project is it has been evolving with time. So not static, but thanks to all sorts of consortium members, contributors. Uh, for example, in the last major Suricata release, there were over 75 different contributors from uh, a bunch of continents and countries, organizations. So it's really, really cool. Um, <clears throat> some of the major features of Suricata, just to set the base correct here, um, standard YAML JSON for uh, configuration and output, easily pluggable in uh, existing setups uh, in terms of uh, standard data. Speed. Suricata is multi-threaded, and one thing that it possesses for sure is speed. There's 100 gigabits plus deployment since 2017, at least that's what YouTube says. Um, Network metadata and uh, metadata and logging for a variety of protocols, including file extraction, PCAPs, advanced uh, analytics of protocols like HTTP, DNS, TLS, all those sorts of things. File identification, extraction, SCADA support, all too. Um, we had about 15 more slides here, but we didn't have enough time, so I decided to skip over. One of the things that have changed for Suricata since the 2000s. Um, as I mentioned, it's a project that constantly evolves. Is actually, if you uh, if you Suricata has a few functionalities. If you switch off all signatures and alerts, it will still produce 95% of its data. The data will still be there. Uh, so, <clears throat> alongside just alerts, that's the involvement part where it actually has uh, been uh, producing all and any and all relevant protocol data. Normally, file extraction picks up as I, as I mentioned to it. So, we don't need another tool to correlate its alerts because it's already by default it produces all those uh, all that data. Um, yeah, you can go on to the next one. So one of the cool features that actually this guy here introduced in Suricata, and that's again open source code donation, is the so-called um, conditional pickup logging. I feel a bit bad, you know, talking about your stuff here instead of you, but <laughs> but um, so it's it's a major major feature where we actually um, it's deduplicated storage of pickup full session pickup, not just the packet, that generated an alert. So it could be one megabyte, one gigabyte, depending how you set up the configuration of how, but all the full session will be there, deduplicated. Um, this feature was like uh, worked on Eric, 
worked on by Eric and Scott Jordan. So very, very useful, something new in uh, Suricata 7. One use case example of that, and I'll tell you how this ties up to IOC matching, uh, modern IOC matching as we move along, is like, here's a use case where we actually had Suricata deployed on a, about 5 gigabit second traffic, small one, which ended up with like 87 gigabytes of disk spec uses for the conditional pickup logging, so the full sessions of any and all the alerts that alerted, uh, deduplicated. So, if you have 1 million or 100,000 alerts of the same basically occurrence, it will be only one full session pickup log because it's actually the same thing. So that's where the deduplication comes at speed, massive. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and that was a period of seven days. In comparison, you would need like about 400 terabytes of that without being in RAID or anything like that for full packet capture, if you're doing full packet capture and everything. Um, so let's talk a little bit about IOCs, right? How good is an IOC match by itself? I don't know, let's talk about it. One morning there was like this 100% known malicious domain seen in the enterprise. And we were like, yeah, we got them. It's an APT. For the purpose of obfuscation, it could be anything. You know, bear, dragon, kitten, red, blue, all the all APT labels. So a bunch of network vendors, a bunch of EDR vendors, marketing departments ringing in. <coughs> We got them, we could have not done it without us and things like that. What we got was the security analyst that was reading a blog by the latest APT by the other security vendor. And why we got that is was actually a DNS domain match on a domain for that APT when the person was reading the browser, something called browser prefetch happened. That's where user experience happens, right, in the browser. So it automatically resolves the domains in the background so it can provide faster user experience. So <clears throat> anyway, um, another example is, you know, 100% known bad IP, you know, a lot of attacks come from there. It's known, well, it depends on the deployment, right? It depends where you stand. If you're a hosting provider, there's not much you can do about it, um, except watching the scans coming in um, or dropping those uh, on the firewall and things like that. So uh, you need, more context around it, right? You need more data. You need, for example, the, the PCAP sessions and things like You need to be able to actually tell more, except that just this one match. Um, so in Suricata, something by default that is generating, this is a pretty view of the JSON log, actually. If, uh, raw JSON log is just being beautified here on a web interface. <coughs> this is a default, actually, output of an alert. In this case, I think what it is, HTTP based, yes. Um, and it has a bunch of uh, data in there, including HTTP analytics, part of the HTTP protocol, MAC addresses, all those sorts of things. The payload printable, exactly where it triggered and why, and similar things, besides the regular source IP destinations and some flow. But what is interesting here, in this SMB, for example, uh, case, is like this is an SMB alert, and if you see on the on top there on the bar, it actually, <clears throat> there's something in by default in Suricata called Flow ID that was actually introduced in 2014, next week will be a decade, that actually allows for correlating any and all protocol logs that Suricata by default produces to that alert, or regardless if there is an alert or not. So in this case, we have, what, 63 related SMB like logs for that specific alert, and and that's part of an actually lateral movement uh, setup. Now I'm gonna I think transfer it over to you for a couple of the cool things. Yeah. Yep. So IOC. Let's go back in a little bit. The old way to do it is to basically have one signature per domain. If you have a list of IOCs, yes, okay, that works. Suricata detection engine is nicely written, so it works. But when you start to have 100,000 rules, maybe you want to do better. So Victor Julien, the main developer of Suricata, did introduce the dataset concept, uh, which is basically the capability to take one buffer in one protocol and say, I want to, that this buffer match this file. And this file is the traditional one per line. And then you can do a lot of things. Like you can say, okay, I've got a list of official user agents in my company, and I want to match when the... I've got a non-official user agent, so dataset is not set. 
you are going to match on this list of user agent and you are going to make an alert. It is working on a lot of fields, so you can also do the same. Okay, I want a file name and I want in the file name to have a content that is ending with executable and I want this file not to be in the list of good executable I know, which will trigger uh, an event if uh, ever this uh, the file name is not in this list. Um, so, or you can do IOC matching with that. So you can, for instance, let's take a list of domain. You can get the list from MISP or from Kratos, if you did already deploy what we have seen this morning. Uh, and uh, you, if it's a string, you need to convert it to base64. If you are using sales uh, or upstamis product, it will be automatically done. But it's just a simple base64 encoding. And then you write one signature for each protocol. So the interesting thing is that even if here we have DNS TLS HTTP, we are doing a reference to exactly the same domain list because HTTP host, TLS server name indication and DNS error name match on domain. So you can use the single, a single signature. So that's really convenient to do the IOC matching. Um, that's one of the features. But there is one other interesting feature that is that the data set can learn. You don't need to inject uh, the data from the file. You can also have a condition in a signature that trigger an addition to an existing set. So for example, uh, let's say that we want to reference all the user agent uh, that we have seen on the network. So you can just do that. Alert HTTP user agent, use the set function, and you will store the result in ua.lst. So this file is saved when uh, Suricata end. So you can restart Suricata. You will have this file that will be not be revisited at the beginning. So you will, uh, you will have the data correctly uh, there when you restart Suricata. So that's quite convenient. So doing that, you can start to mix things. So you can combine data set with other data set, with other keyword in signatures, and you can build some interesting things. So for example, in the Alexa top 1 million, um, outside, of, outside of the Alexa top 1 million, so the 1 million most used domain, um, you may find some interesting thing. So let's say that we want to detect the list of HTTP results that are not going to Alexa. So you can do it like this. First data set on a HTTP host to check if it's the, if the domain is in Alexa 1 million. And then we do another HTTP user agent that check, yes, let's get rid of wget. And if it's the case, then I will uh, just set uh, the event, right, set the HTTP user agent uh, in the data set and I will have an alert that will be produced at the first insertion, not at every packet. So that's uh, just one alert for every new agent. That's quite convenient. So using this technique, you can build uh, sightings. We we'll call that sightings, even if it's not the same as the MISP one. Uh, and you can build a first time seen database with this learning data set for any protocol field at a really low cost with signature don't trigger uh, a lot of uh, CPU usage on the, on the detection engine, so that's convenient. So for that, you can use the set. So yes, set the TLS fingerprint, and you store the TLS fingerprint. You can do that on SMB file name. So get the SMB, and then SMB file name, and then you store everything. So the interest of this technique is that it will get you the patient zero for all the metadata that you did start to look, uh, that, that you did write a signature for. So you will have, uh, the, here with this, we will have a list of TLS fingerprint with it, a CBC file name on one event for the first time, one specific value has been seen. So if you have uh, an IOC that you need to check later, uh, you can check in this sighting database because you will have at least the patient zero that will have it on, on uh, this information. Even if you don't, this way you can have longer retention because if you decide to store all the TLS uh, session establishment, that would be a lot of noise and a lot of volume. So by doing this uh, sightings approach, you can really lower uh, the data storage. You don't have anything, but at least you know that you have seen this IOC uh, in your network. 
Um, one other interesting thing is that you can combine and pass things from the IDS world to the NSM world. And one thing that you can use is this uh, Flowbit uh, variable, uh, Flowbit keyword, sorry. And um, when you set here a Flowbit, like here eternal malware, because it's an eternal blue detection, and what you will see is that you will have the flow bits here, eternal malware, and uh, you will have uh, the information about the flow ID that, that have been uh, told by the correlation uh, about the correlation by Peter before. And last but not least, uh, we have the capability to interact with a Unix socket uh, that Suricata is running, so we can pass command to Suricata via this Unix socket to get information to update some data. On dataset, I'm so add some commands. So you can add an element in an existing dataset. You can remove an element from the dataset. And in Suricata 7, you have uh, some other uh, keywords like uh, dataset lookup. Is this, uh, uh, is this in my dataset? So you can just query Suricata to see if it has been seen on the network. And dataset clear to clear a dataset and dataset dump, which is kind of useful because if ever your Suricata is killed for some reason, you may lose all the dataset uh, file that has been seen on the, uh, so all the data that has been seen on the network. So by doing a dataset dump, you write to disk, um, the file, that, uh, the list file. So the, basically the list of files you see that have uh, been discovered. <coughs> All right, so a little bit more on more than IOC matching. So, for example, Cisco releases a CVE, or it doesn't matter who it is, Microsoft, it could be somebody else, it doesn't matter. And they say, okay, came, these two domains came out of, or this hash was there. One of the things that you also need to know is like, has this happened in the past, right? Have we seen that domain in our last 30 days or 60 days in, in our uh, network um, infrastructure? So that's where... Um, the NSM uh, feature, network security monitoring feature, the logs produced from Suricata come in. You know, they produced it there. You, you can go back and look at them. You know, two weeks ago, did we have that domain popping up anywhere? Just a domain as an example. Um, same goes, there's different IOCs, right? URLs, file hashes, a uh, domain can appear in, in clear text mail, for example. It could be IP. Source and destination and similar things. So, a uh, posteriori matching is also very important, not just forward looking, but also backward looking um, in terms of IOC uh, modern matching, so to speak. So, what I need from these IOCs? Well, I personally would like something like that. In our deployment, we have 10 million plus different types of IOCs. I want them to be fast, I want no performance impact, I want for example, if it's a domain, I want it to match on HCP, hostnames, TLS, SNI, see if they're their domains. I want all these flows and logs to be marked. In other words, to have an insert a piece of metadata in there that I can use later in my uh, queries. Um, yes, Ricardo can do that on the fly at speed with the data set of feature that Eric was just uh, describing ab uh, about and with very, very little 0 0.012 performance impact. So, streaming IOC matching, what does this mean? Well, if we actually, let's say, have a domain, I want that piece of metadata inserted in the log. So, as you see on the screen here, it says flow bit, stamp send ID, or whatever you want in. And this will be marked, all flows, all protocol logs, all file transaction logs will be marked with that, so I can later use it in a query. Um, and so that's where the, the one of the benefits comes in. And yes, you can do it with Suricata because that's um, already existing in, in there, uh, matching on a domain. So um, yes, okay, domains are good, but there's something also called newly registered domains, and those are vicious, some of them. Not all domains are bad by default. N not all newly registered domains are bad by default, right? Um, there is uh, just the, the fact that it's a newly registered domain is not enough by itself as an IOC. Um, you often enough malware actors will actually will register and burn some new registered domains because threat intel providers need time to actually see and look and deduct if these domains, for example, are good or bad. So time is an, of essence here. Some threat intel providers use supercomputers that walk the whole internet for less than 24 hours. It's on that scale. So if you register a new domain and you're in a rush to do something, uh, it, could be, it could also be a perfectly valid new registered domain. 
Like, for example, my kid's school project. That's fine, too. Now, what does this mean? So, the top one here was registered 19 days ago. Well, 20, because, yeah, the 20 now, um, for phishing. Um, and that's not a domain for Microsoft, right? Uh, the second domain in there, as you would notice, is not something that you memorize and expect the users to type in their browser. Uh, so this was created eight days ago, um, and it has a very high entropy name and things like that. So am I interested in these things? Yes, how can we use them? So there's two types of usages you can apply, for example. One is um, something that's based on a signature, and the other one is something that's based on just uh, searching and querying uh, data, um, any data. So it could be, uh, you know, is, it, is there large transfers to... Uh, to some, some of these new registered domains? Is it actual TCP connections? Um, is it something like beaconing? Is it, is, is it clear text executable downloaded? Are there any SMTP, FTP, SSH connections, SSH new hashes through it? You know, um, some of these things could be used in a signature. Some of these things could be used on search and analytics. Um, and here in this talk, we're not just going to talk on high level. Uh, we're also going to give some examples. Here's an example of, well, actually, this is an Elasticsearch query. It's pretty much very similar to what a Splunk query will be or a Google Chronicle would be. So we, in this one here, we're saying if the flows are marked with flow bits, let's say, newly registered domain, the status code is 200 and there is an executable downloaded from there. That's what we're searching for. So um, this is based on Suricata produced data inline. So... Next one here, this is actually very interesting. This is from flow-based records from the Suricata. These are generated regardless if there is a signature alert or not. If you switch off the signature, the flow will still be there. Um, the flow record, rather. So in this case, we're saying actually um, is a high entropy flow here. The application layer protocol is TLS. Um, this visualization is available on open source on GitHub, one of the Kibana dashboards that we make for Suricar. But in that case, actually, we had 115, the, the, the top two ones were actually beaconing of infected hosts already to uh, something, uh, to a host with a very high entropy domain name in its TLS SNA. Um, here is another example of actually clear text HTTP. Why? Because it's the easiest thing to go through uh, in a lot of cases. I mean, so basically, ping, ping, ping. What we're looking for is a HTTP host name uh, with high entropy in its name, and it's giving you either 404s or something else like that. Every now and then, just checking out if the host, if the infected host is alive. Uh, simple things like that go a very, very uh, long way. This is an HTTP uh, record. Uh, with that comes an announcement. Actually, we've been talking about new registered domains, so there they are. They're free for download. We just actually uh, make that available today. Um, lots of teamwork. Um, so you have three different sets there, just the newly registered domain, uh, phishing and entropy, and those are two subgroups, you know, 15 days and 30 days. Anybody can sign up and get them. They're ready to use for Suricata, and you just need to plug them in. Um, so that's where you can get them from if you need to. Um, and hopefully this will be useful. All right. Uh, should we stay here with more of it? Maybe we're out of yeah. time. Yeah, okay. We're going to come back to that slide yeah. if, if it's needed, but transfer to you, sir. Yeah, so I would like to uh, showcase a little bit what we have, we can do with dataset with uh, Yosemite that we did develop uh, with uh, Sebastian Um And so the concept was kind of simple. MISP is publishing, um, one of the things that MISP is doing is you can get feed of IOC. Um, Suricata can match on IOC, so we can be friend. Uh, so the way we can do this is to try to see how we can use the different features of the software to work on that. So on this side, it's easy. You got a URL where you can fetch the domain. On Suricata, you can, uh, in fact, have data set that you can use on a signature and then you can enrich the data set. So as I said before, you can load a data set from a file, but you can also use uh, the unique socket to add element inside the data set. So that's what Yosemite is doing. It is connecting to MISP, importing everything, 
and then it is adding element inside a data set inside Suricata. So we got the import phase, and when then we can start again the import task, it is going to get the latest addition in the feed, and only this addition in the feed will be added via the unique socket inside the data set. So this way we can be really dynamic. You can run this task every minute, every five minutes, and you will dynamically add element inside the data set uh, that you are going to alert on. So what does happen with the alert? The alert can be sent in Redis or on file, and then Yosemite can read uh, this alert from Redis. And what will happen is that uh, we will have uh, a sightings real MISP sightings that will be done uh, for this IOC when there is a match, so we can warn um, uh, MISP about about this. Uh, so Yosemite has been developed by Sébastien Larigné in collaboration with Stamus Networks. It's developed in Python, licenses MIT, and it's available in on GitHub. And um, yeah, so it also uses some nice uh, tricks. So it's using the same trick as you've got one single single domain list that is matching on different fields and it is using the metadata keyword uh, to set that the sightings is in fact done on the DNS query RNNM field in this case, which means that what will happen is that this information there will be present in the alert. So in the alert we will have, we will know which field we need to look in the metadata of the alert to know what the match was on. So doing this, this is used by the feedback loop for the sightings. It sees the field you need to look at. So Yosemite see the field you need to look at, check the value, and send the value as a sighting to MISP. So this way we can have a, a good uh, a good loop. So the usage is simple. You are doing an import, and then you are running uh, the uh, regular uh, export here. And then you got the sightings that appear in MISP uh, directly. Um, conclusion. Uh, yep, so Suricata, IDS plus NSM. Uh, I really recommend to get a look at the Suricata Analyst Guide to Suricata we have wrote with Peter because it gives you a good list of what you can do with uh, Suricata. Also explain you how you can write uh, performance signature if you want also to look at the IDS side of Suricata. The NAD, uh, NRD thread uh, feed is there, and we got some Suricata on for sure, Yosemite, that you can download. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Any questions? Questions? Everything was clear? Yes? Oh, no. For the uh, feed, uh, the newly registered domains, uh, you mentioned that it's uh, in phishing or with big entropy, etc. What's the source for the phishing, detecting that it's phishing domains? There's multiple sources. Uh, it's not just one. And they go through regular QAing, um, all those things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's uh, a whole process behind it, sorry. I think the question is about how do you determine it is phishing? So, uh, yeah. There's a whole process around this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just because of naming conventional thing like that. So there's different providers coming in. There's QAs. There's all sorts of entropy calculations processing going through just to determine if that's what. If, for example, if, if the domain comes in and it's not registered by that specific vendor and things like that, there's different uh, risk factors involved and uh, that eventually combine and give out that uh, that uh, phishing context. I would love to continue on explaining, it's no problem. But okay, any just other let questions? Me know before lunch. If, <laughs> if there are no other questions. Oh, of course. I'll start there next time. It'll be a quick one. Um, it's not directly related to the last to, to, to the, the matching part, although it could be. Just to, uh, have you, since you mentioned the IDS part, uh, have folks at Suricata looked into unsupervised learning algorithms? Uh, to move away from the entirely signature-based one or not. They just don't look at it. Sorry? They don't look at it. They don't? No, no, because we're producing the data. 
um, the data in NSM in a lot of cases are enough to do that. So you've got the data, you can run your algorithm on the data. And as I like to say, if you are not happy with the data, please complain. Um, we are going to fix that. We are going to try to fix that. Sorry, I forget the try. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Thank you.